Well guys, it's here. Akira Scales, much anticipated, Class 92 has landed. What do I think of this model? Well, sit back and relax, and you'll find out. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel. Well what can I say? It's here. The Acura Scale Class 92 has landed. This is a model that I've been very much looking forward to getting. This isn't a model however that when they were first announced I went out and pre-ordered in a heartbeat. I actually pre-ordered this model, I think it was a week or so, just before that they were due to come into stock. And the day after that they had arrived into stock, the first of them, that's when I then got an email to say that mine had been dispatched. And I am very much looking forward to getting it out of the box. In terms of which one I've gone for, I don't really need to tell you, I don't think, but the one I have gone for is 92022 Charles Dickens in the Ralph Rate Distribution European livery, which you can see on the box. This is a, a Cura Scale exclusive edition that you can only buy directly from the Akira Scale website. So without further ado I'm going to get this model unboxed and we're going to get it down on the lights and we're going to have a look at it. Right now, just before I talk about the model, I just want to, as quickly as I can, talk about what you get in the box with the model. First of all, I will quickly go through the packaging. It is very robust and sturdy packaging. When I unboxed the model, there were no loose bits around in the box. I had to be glued back on again, so that's fantastic. You know, the packaging has been really well made. And what I especially like is the artwork on the box. And this is something that I like that Akira Scale do with exclusive models that they make the packaging look a bit more attractive and colourful and I really do like that artwork on the box I think it looks stunning you do also get some accessory packs with the model but I'll be talking about those later and this is all the paperwork you have the limited edition certificate this one I have is number 8 of 450 produced of 92022 Charles Dickens it's got all the signatures there on it as well from everyone at Secure Scale so that will be going into my folder where I keep all my certificates later on you've then got the class 92 window blinds which you have to cut them out and fit them in yourself I have no intention of fitting these personally to my model but if I ever do decide to in the future someday then that means I can at least keep these and put them to one side you've then got this sheet of card which is for the sound functions basically for the decoder this is for the lock sound decoder and you've got all the functions on here that will be of much use to me personally because I don't have DCC but for those who have it there you go then we have the operator guide of the locomotive and 
the model, which does include brief history of the locomotives as well, and all the history on them. And then you have this, which is this is the operating and caring guide. So it tells you about unpacking, the intended use, wheel cleaning, on the back it shows, fitting the accessories, as well as the exploded diagram on the inside with all the parts. So I just wanted to go through as quickly as I could just to show you what you get in the box. So now we're going to come on to the Dyson itself and from the second you unbox this model it really is a jaw dropping moment because no matter where you look at this model it screams quality and detail not to mention innovation and accuracy it really is an absolute stunning and beautiful model straight out of the box there's no quality control issues, there was none upon unboxing the model as I've already mentioned there were no loose bits in the box that's great to see no damage done to the model in any way no chips in the paintwork or anything it's an absolute superb and high quality factory finish that we expect to see these models arriving when we get them now I should say that when I first ran this model it did run a bit erratic it wasn't the smoothest of runners but I let this model run in for at least 30 minutes or so and it now runs beautifully it's a thing I have touched on before this if you do get a model and it doesn't run smooth to begin with when you first try it on the track don't just send it back immediately let the model run in and see if it improves if it doesn't then that's when I'd send it back if it does improve then that's it you know a lot of the time you'll get a new model because bear in mind this model hasn't been ran you know it could work straight out of the box first time first time it might not but that's why running in is so important like I say I have touched on this before remember my review on the Hornby Britannia when I first got that model that was an erratic performer as well wasn't smooth straight out of the box but after a lot of running in as mentioned in that video it was then a beautiful runner and it has been ever since so that's why you need to run in these models also aside from the absolutely beautiful and smooth performance from this model it's also a very weighty loco so you're not going to have any issues with the traction there and also you have working directional lights head and tail lights and also you have illuminated cab dials as well as per with the Deltics which I think is an absolute brilliant feature to see on DC there isn't any interior cab lighting but there is when you fit it with a DCC decoder and you know the quality of the lighting again is fantastic as well and bear in mind there's the price point as well I paid 189 quid for this model Considering all the detail that's gone into it, as well as this innovation that they've put in, things that you don't necessarily need to see but they have done, and it's absolutely fantastic that they have done it, if this was done by another manufacturer this would easily be 200 quid or even over. And it isn't, it's 189 quid. So there's the price point as well. I think that's an absolute bargain, I do, for this model. It really is, when you consider the amount of detail and the quality that's gone into this model. If you thought that a Cura scale couldn't top the Deltic or thought perhaps they couldn't do any better than the Deltic they have done with the 92. Now before I go on to the detail and start covering it I do want to quickly talk about the pantograph because they are clipped into position they're locked in position for safe transportation of the model. So you do need to release the pantographs from the retaining clips and to do that they recommend using tweezers or a fine pointed tool to carefully and gently lift them from the underneath. So this is going to be fun. So I've got my tweezers here.
There we go. Jobs are good. Un. You do have to be very careful with doing that. But it's not too difficult to do either. And if you're going to run this loco off third rail, using the third rail pickup shoes, then you can leave the pantographs in their locked position. So now we're going to move on to the detail. So for a start we have sprung buffers. And these are made out of plastic. I know metal buffers are probably better than plastic ones. But to be honest with you, on a loco like this, it's brewing with all this detail and quality etc. I can overlook plastic made buffers. So it's not something that I will complain about. Some might say otherwise, but there we go. They are what they are, I suppose. You have slim tension lock couplings, which will be getting replaced with magnetic ones. You already have a dummy coupling hook on the buffer beam just there, as well as some air pipes, as you can see, that are pre-fitted. As well as some other bits of detail on the buffer beam as well. Moving to the front of the loco, we have the overhead warning flashes, as you can see. And they are crisply and neatly applied, and the print on those is second to none. You've also got a separately fitted lamp iron, as you can see on the front of the loco, and that's been painted. You've also got a separately fitted handrail on the front of the loco as well, and that's also been painted. You've got the loco's running number, 022, crisply and neatly applied on the front. You've also got the black seal around the headlights, as you can see, that's been very neatly painted and done. A Kira scale has really captured the overall look and shape and the detail of the Class 92 spot on. Everywhere you look at it, it's a 92 and they've especially nailed the face of the loco. Which, on any loco, no matter what it is, the first thing you're always going to see when seeing a real one, if you're at a station or at a lineside location, first thing you'll see is the face of the loco and they've got it spot on, as they have with the rest of the loco. We've got glazing in all of the cab windows and you can see we have separately fitted window wipers. And, and just look at how fine those windscreen wipers are. Also inside the cab interior you can just about make out all the detail that's in there. It's not a low quality cab interior detail, it's high quality. You know, it's all been painted all the controls are painted and on the back of the cab on those walls you have things like for example signs in there and even the door handle there in the door has been painted as well as you can clearly see so that really is a work of art to see you've also got the horns on the roof there separately fitted and they're either side of that top headlight there on the roof. Moving on to the cab doors now. And what I find remarkable with these is it's not just the handrails that are separately fitted, but the door handles are as well. You do have to look really closely, but they are separately fitted. They're not moulded, they're separately fitted bits of detail. And that is just mind blowing to see. You know, I wouldn't have expected those to have been separately fitted and it wouldn't have mattered if they were moulded otherwise because of all the other detail that's on this model. But they're separately fitted. And that just adds so much more detail to the model. It's just incredible. It really is. And it just shows the amount of detail and the amount of effort that a Curiscale have put into the model. And the detail doesn't stop there. Just look at the amount of detail you've got on the bogies. I mean, okay, rivets are obviously going to be moulded on, as you can see them on the sandboxes. But, just have a look at all the pipe work that's there on the bogies. All separately fitted, picked out and painted. You've got the springs and the axle boxes. And you've got the third rail pickup shoes. Those are separately fitted as well. Plus the footstep for the cab so the crew can climb up to get into the cab that footstep is separately fitted as well the detail is just absolutely 
again it's just phenomenal and then moving to the battery boxes as well I mean just look at the detail on those you know again all separately fitted bits of detail it's not all one moulded piece it's all picked out and painted and there is detail on them as well even that there that mesh grill on that bit of detail there that ain't moulded as you can see that's a separate fitting and just look at the detail you have behind that as well so it just shows the level of detail that's gone into this and what can be done especially when you take into the price factor as well on the side of the loco body we have here what are called the polo mints now those have been moulded into the body they ain't printed onto the body sides they're moulded on and that's just lovely to see and again just look at the detail on them I mean the moulding that's been done it's not low quality moulding at all that's a make fit and make do type of job it's been done accurately as you see them in real life and the painting on those is just fantastic as well moving on to the body side grills these ain't moulded and then painted afterwards these are etched separate fittings as you can clearly see and also just look at the detail behind the grills as well that detail there that's been not only picked out and painted but it's separately fitted it's there as a separate piece it ain't something that's been moulded into the grills if you like and again that's that just shows the amount of detail that's gone into the model with this model you're certainly getting a lot of bang for your buck so when you see other manufacturers doing moulded grills even if perhaps maybe they do look nice in their own way they come nowhere near close to being a superior as separate etched fittings especially when you take into the account of the price of the models again this is a 189 quid model the body side grills are separately fitted as is the detail behind them and it's been painted they've gone the extra mile so other manufacturers take note this is how it should be done they've even gone to town with the pantographs not just with the detail on them but also these pantographs can work on DCC they've used a pair of coreless motors so that on DCC they can be used to raise or lower the pantographs pretty much a similar thing like they've done with Batman's Class 90 those pantographs can work using servo motors on DCC now I can't demonstrate that for myself because I don't have DCC but with kind permission from Acura Scale I can show you a clip of the pantograph working and you know for that again it's just value for money with this model at the end of the day that's what it is especially when they've gone to the trouble of having these pantographs to work on DCC and they had to change the factory as well I understand if I remember correctly because the previous factory that was being manufactured at didn't have the technology to allow that so they had to change the factory so that that could be incorporated into the model and they didn't whack the price up either the price stayed the same as it was and the pa I think as well with the pantographs on this model the motors I think do sound better than the servo motors that have been used on the Batman Class 90 that's just my opinion though so you know it's not a feature I'm not fussed about not having because having the pantograph raised it's good enough for me but to at least know it's there and it can be worked on DCC it's still a nice thing and I'm sure those that have DCC will definitely get some fun out of raising and lowering the pantograph also can we please take note of all the detail that's gone into the roof all the electrical equipment radiators and so on it's all there all separately fitted and painted none of that 
is moulded. Like I say, all separately fitted. I mean, look at those grills there. I mean, they're not basic mouldings. I mean, that's high quality detail, especially those at the back over there. As you can see, those are separately fitted. I mean, okay, rivet detail that is there, you will expect that to be moulded, because, you know, it's going to be difficult, really, at the end of the day, to have separately fitted rivets. But those details, such as the grills, there's another one there, again, separately fitted bit of detail. It's separately fitted and painted. So, that is just superior detail, that is. And none of this detail has been poorly fitted. Again, it's done to a top quality factory finish. I don't really need to show you the other end of the loco, but I'm going to anyway, just for the sake of it. I don't really need to cover much of the detail because it's basically all the same as on the other end. You've got the horns, window wipers, handrail and lamp iron, etc. Same details we've seen on the other end. And again, High quality detail that's been perfectly fitted. Not a single bit of damage, loose bit of detail, etc. anywhere. And again, that's what we expect from these models. When we're paying all this money, this is how they should come. One detail difference, though, that is worth mentioning is this bit of detail here. That little bit of white detailing on that end of the cab roof. On the other end, you don't have that bit of detail, instead you get that bit of detail just there. That isn't white, it's silver. And again, that's as per the locomotive. Those detailed differences that they've covered. Moving on to the livery application now, which is just absolutely gorgeous. It's not just the detail and the level of that that they've gone into the model that's been done to a high perfection. The liveries as well. No livery imperfections anywhere at all, no paint, chips, etc. It's a very even and smooth coat of paint. And all the colours they've got into the livery is correct. You've got the blue roof. You've got the yellow ends. The black around the windows and the cab doors. And you've got the two-tone grey livery. And that's an absolute crisp finish, that is, the way that's been painted as well. It's a high quality paint finish. You have crisply fitted printed nameplates on the body sides, which they do look nice, though they do supply etched nameplates, which I will be showing a little bit later on, soon. So you get those to fit over the printed nameplates, so you don't have to look elsewhere and buy them. You also have the top data panel there, You've got the Locos running number, 92022. Correct style numerals and crisply and neatly applied. You've got the bi 0 logo there, which that logo there on the Loco would have been made out of stainless steel. And you do get those as well in the accessory bag with the nameplates, so you can fit those. You also have the depot plaques as well. Again, you get etched ones of those supplied with the model as well. But the printed on those ones, it's still second to none, it's still absolutely stunning and exquisite. Plus you've got the Ralph Wright distribution logo crisply and neatly applied as well as the Rail Freight distribution font. Correct style of font as well and again neatly and superbly applied. You also get these labels, if that's the correct term for these printed onto the body sides and these are basically placed in areas that basically tell you what bit of detail is what under the loco. I'm not going to start reading through them all especially because this camera has been playing a bit of havoc trying to focus in on them but you get those and they're in numerous different places along the body and they just look fantastic and again, it's little things like that that make a big difference, I think. Especially in locos like this. So I'll just quickly show you the other side of the loco. 
don't really need to, but I'm going to anyway. Just to show that again on this side, it's fine. No issues on this side, like there was on the other side of the loco. The detail is not too much different. There is one bit of, di bit of detail difference, which is that red bit of detail there. And again, that's a separately fitted bit of detail, not moulded on. Not one piece moulding, that's a separate fitting. But apart from that though, the detail is pretty much the same. And again, the detail has all been done to a high standard. So now I'm going to show you what you're getting in the accessory bags. Here you have the nameplates, the BR Double Arrow logos and the shed plaques. Those are all etched as you can see. They're not bits of plastic with the nameplates etc just printed onto them. They're proper etched metal plates. You know, especially for the money as well, you would expect these to be etched, and they are. And I shall be fitting those later. I'll be using double-sided tape to stick them on. So, again, that's as per their Deltics, etched metal nameplates. Good on your Acura scale. Then in the other accessory bag, you have a few bits of detail. Screw link couplings, a couple of pipes in there. And you've got these air dams. And again, these bits are optional. You either choose to fit them or you don't. But that's what you get in the accessory bags. So that's basically it for the detail, having covered pretty much all, if not most, of the detail that you get on the loco. Not to mention things like, for example, the lighting and the inno innovative features, like the pantographs, etc. So having covered that, what we now need to do is to see the loco in action. So I'm going to get this loco running, hauling my intermodal wagons, because they have been crying out for a locomotive like this to pull them. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. And then we'll come on to my final conclusion.
So we've just seen the Acura Scale 92 running around the layout with my intermodal wagons. I know some people are probably thinking, shouldn't there be more of them? I've got a rack of 10, I'm more than happy with that. Not really necessarily buying, perhaps maybe a few more in the future, but I'm happy to stick with my rack of 10. I mean, when I first got them, the reliability wasn't massively great. I did have a few teething troubles with them, but they've settled down now and now they run absolutely fantastically, so I can't fault them. And they certainly do look brilliant, and well suited in fact, to being hauled by my Class 92. So that's another plus there. You know, because I do have fond memories of the 92s, I remember seeing them all over the place really on freight duties such as intermodals, whereas these days, you know, at this point in time I only really seem to be seeing 92s hauling the Caledonian sleeper. You don't see to see them much now on freight traffic as they used to be. But there you go. So what's my verdict then on the Acura Scale Class 92? In summary, go ahead and buy one. Get your wallet out and spend your money. I know some of you are probably thinking, if I'm running low cars like this, should I not have any catenary? Eh? Well, it's a model row at the end of the day. Just imagine it's there. And also, if this layout is looming towards a rebuild, which is a possibility, I think, and I think it's, it probably is going to happen, it is something I'd like to do, no point adding catenary on anyway, especially adding the wires, you know, that will cause a pain and problems when it comes to cleaning the track, or in my case, if you've got no fiddle yard and you need to put your stock on the layout. You know, but well, it is what it is at the end of the day. But as for the Acura Scale 92, I mean, what is there left to say that I've not already said about the model? I genuinely, I genuinely believe that this model is a contender for a groundbreaking model. And I honestly think that next year, when some of these awards start up again, like for example Hornby Magazine Awards, I think they've got an award winning model on their hands with this. The Deltic won awards, and rightly so, so I think the 92 will also be a contender for awards as well. I think that that will skip a few, as I'm sure will all Acura Scales, other Locos, and other future products will, which I'm immensely looking forward to. I've got one of the Deltics, as you all know. Love that model. Now I've got a Class 92. My opinion is no different. And I immensely look forward to the Class 89 that I've got on pre-order. And I'm also really looking forward to the Manners, the 37s, the 50s and the 31s and goodness knows what other locomotives might be coming along in the future from them. And you know, whilst manufacturers are calling being Batman and so on, they can still produce great models, no doubt about it. But smaller manufacturers such as Acura Scale and Rapido and so on, they're making products that are just as good if not better even higher quality models than they are. So, round of applause to you guys. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Keep carrying on producing these absolutely fabulous products. Like I say, if you, don't, if you guys don't have one of these models then you're missing out. Go and splash the cat and get one, because you won't be disappointed by them, whether it's an analogue DC model or a DCC fitted model, or even one with sound. You're not going to be disappointed. And I've absolutely fell in love with this thing, and I'm going to enjoy it on my layout for years to come, and I'm delighted to have this join the fleet. So a huge round of applause to you guys at Acura Scale. You've absolutely nailed this model. You really have. So that's my end of my review for the Acura Scale Class 92. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed. If you do like what you see, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button, feel free to post a comment, and while you're at it, when you've done that, do feel free to check out all my other videos I've got on the channel. But until then, take care. Goodbye for now.